To be poor is hard, but to be a poor race in a land enriched with resources is the very bottom of hardship, and life becomes a thorny path to those whom poverty oppresses. The Amansule River in the western region. Wondering why I'm wading through this river? Where I'm going to? Or perhaps what is even beyond this point? This district is among 21 other districts here in the western region. And beyond this point is Mejina, a community, small community which is estranged from other major townships. Let's get to find out some shocking revelations and intriguing revelations and the way of life, what sits with them in terms of resources and how life actually is beyond this point. The sweeping vegetation that stretches across the Amanzule River to the far side of Insulezu is a vast and rich land with a small number of people living on it. Mayajina is a small community in the Jomro constituency of the western region. Life here can best be described as primitive. We spent half an hour flooding to the bank of the river. At the river bank, we were informed by the young man who brought us with a canoe that we had to walk about 30 kilometers through the forest before getting to the community. We began to walk while carrying our luggage. It got stressful as we covered more ground. We eventually arrived in the community. To my utmost surprise, it looked bleak and desolate. There wasn't much happening. And the settlement layout was cluttered and built with mud while a few were partially plastered with cement. When the locals noticed our presence, they curiously stared. It was heartbreaking to see the elderly walking unsteadily towards us and stopping in mid-strides while the kids also faltered due to sickness which could clearly be seen on their faces. This prompted me to walk through the community to understand what significantly defined life in Mirjina. It was extremely easy to walk the length and breadth of the community without missing our way due to its small size. We discovered that portable water, electricity, healthcare facility and schools were all non-existent. Shocking, the only structure in the community that was used as a school was in a deplorable state. You could clearly tell that teaching and learning haven't been done for years in that space. We were told it was abandoned by pupils because their parents couldn't afford to pay one CD a month as tuition fee. I was interested to know who was responsible for teaching the kids in the community. I eventually met with a teacher, Nicholas. Nicholas is a missionary who visited Mayajina and was appalled by the level of illiteracy in the community. He took it upon himself to do something about the situation. This is the class, it is two. I have to divide them into two. Some are the other class and some are the other class so that, uh, they, if, because if I want to keep them, the room is too small for them, so I have to separate them. So, I taught for two years, and then the parents couldn't afford just one CD for a child. They couldn't afford for about one and a half year. They couldn't, so I have to just give up. Having learned that the director of education has promised to post a teacher to the community, I took a chance to visit the home that had been prepared for him by members of the community. The abject poverty in the community 
drove the teacher away without any explanation to elders of the town. This daunting situation about the lack of education amidst other imminent issues such as poor roads, proper healthcare facility has been the heartache of the chief in the land. The chief expressed worry about the perilous state of the community. <laughs> There are two impents in Mayajina. Out of sheer curiosity, I tried access in the second alternative. I found to my dismay that locals had to wade four miles through water and on ground to reach the next available town, being. Due to this obvious risk, the chief has reached a consensus with parents to only send children above six years to school. At the time of our visit, the water had receded. Something else struck me about the town. Some buildings had been pulled down. The youth organizer in the community explained the exodus of people from the town because of the stifling economic conditions. These structures are pulled down by occupants to signify that they are never returning to Mayajina. These people are part of the Ghanaian voters. They vote to elect leaders to lift them out of their abject poverty. But this hope is quickly becoming a dream each passing day. And it is sad to know that the eyes and ears of the authorities have been closed to the plight and cries of these people in Mirjina community. This is the life beyond the greens. Shocking revelations, disheartening and heartbreaking. Joshua Nanakwa Meira. GH1 News.